Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video, as the title says below, is going to be my top biblical fiction picks for 2019. I have read a lot of books. We know I love reading. And I decided to do my top picks for biblical fiction, my top for Christian fiction, and my top for the nonfiction that I read. So I have, uh, I don't even know how many books are in front of me, but I'm going to say about nine total, I think. There are nine total on this 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 pile if I'm not mistaken nine total but I do have a duology and a trilogy on here to share with you guys um I also have two honorable mentions because even though I read them I really want to include them in my 2020 videos so I'm not going to include them in this video but I will talk about them because I love them both so much but we'll get to that towards the end but these are going to be my favorite biblical fiction reads of this year so far that I've read and um I don't I have them in order of how much I enjoyed them. Um, all of these were five-star reads, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they were all five-star reads. So that's another thing. They're all five-star. I'm going to leave my links down below for you guys to check out the reviews that I have on. I'm going to link you guys to my Daughter of Increase Goodreads reviews. So you can just click the links down below. But yeah, we're going to dive in. I do have my coffee mug that I got from my sis Angela over at Sisters and Pearls, which I can't wait for 2020 for Sisters and Pearls because I am ready for this annotating video, sis yes but um yes so i'm drinking some maxwell french vanilla coffee with french vanilla creamer from um international delights really good and not super strong but we're gonna dive in so the first one i have to start off with is one that i started my year off i started 2019 off with this um duology and it just has a it has a, it has a place in my heart like it has a place in my heart I, I can't I just I can't do Harvest of Rubies by Miss Tessa Afshar and Harvest of Gold which is a sequel it is a duology that follows Sarah and Darius Sarah is the would be cousin of the prophet Nehemiah so the prophet Nehemiah is definitely heavy in this book um, and it really just dives into you understanding your worth and how your worth is not measured by um, you working and uh, I adore this. I think why I love it so much is because it's also one of the most comical books that Tessa Afshar has written. Most of Miss Tessa Afshar's books are um, hard hitting and they have funny moments, but they're not meant to be funny. I feel like Harvest of Ruby's duology is so hilarious. Even though it's not meant to be hilarious, it's just the mindset of Sarah and Darius makes it hilarious and how they... Um, work together and interact together and i love it so much i love all the characters in this book all of them from start to finish queen demospia king Arata. Ara i don't know how to say it but i think he was xerxes son so xerxes son loved him the queen mother pissed me off i don't like the queen mother like this book i could talk about it for days i love sarah so much she learned a lot about um understanding that it's not about you measuring up to the worth of what people think or you measuring up to how much or how well you can perform it's really all about god's love for you and how it's unconditional and this book just has a special place in my heart we will be reading harvest of rubies for doi's 2020 book club pick so if you have not seen that video just click the eye on the screen but i highly recommend this book this as well as pearl in the sand those two right there have my heart they are my favorites from tessa like they're high up on my list but um both of these books had to be on this list because i read them both this year and um they're phenomenal phenomenal reads comical reads i mean you see all these tabs right we just had to talk about it so definitely number one on my list Following that, we have number two, which is a whole trilogy, and this trilogy you have seen me do in my reading vlog series, which I'll leave a link, you click the eye on the screen and go to that, but this, <laughs> like I'm laughing because it has such a special place in my heart, um, literally, I could relate to this book, especially the first book on such a personal level, um, it's kind of like, I could relate to Pearl in the Sand for certain aspects, but this book here, I could relate to on a serious personal level with what Jerusha was going through. And that's going to be the entire 
Lion and Butterfly trilogy. Um, it's actually a series. Oh my gosh. So let me let you guys know. And I still have yet to respond to the email because I don't I don't even know how to respond because I'm like I'm I'm shook in like the best way. So in my videos, I always talk about, you know, me talking to Linda and like I talk to her in my videos, right? Um, shockingly enough, she actually emailed me. And I kid you I, I, I kid you guys not. Um I was literally on my way to bed and I got an email. And it said Linda Ferguson, and I was confused because I'm like, Linda Ferguson, who is that? And I opened up the email and I read it. I broke out in tears. It's probably been a couple days since I read the email. I'm literally going to print the email out because it meant so much to me that she actually would contact me. And Linda Ferguson is the author. And I, I'm, I'm just, I'm mind blown. Like, mind blown, you guys, that she actually emailed me and watched my videos. It, it meant the world to me, honestly. Um... And I'm not glorifying her at all by any means. But what I mean by that is that when when I make these videos, um, I get shocked when the authors actually reach out to me. And yes, they're just regular people, but um, they craft such phenomenal worlds and characters that are so relatable that her email really hit me in the heart. And there was some stuff that she put in the email that um, it, it was like it hit it, it hit the nail for me. Um, I, I still need to respond back to the email. It literally has taken me some time because I've been super busy. And it's just like, what do I say in the email? But um, she did tell me some news that I don't know if I'm able to say it out loud. So I'm not going to. But I'm like super, super excited for her next book. That's all I'm going to say. Her next book. Oh, oh my gosh. But this entire trilogy. The first book is A Royal Dance. Um, <sighs> this book here is the first in the series. In the trilogy. Series, excuse me. And, um, it deals with rape, sexual abuse, um, and things like that. And it, if you want to see my full, like, feelings and stuff on this, just click, um, down below in the description box to go to the exact video for this book because I really go into depth. Um, just know my reading blogs are spoilery, so if you haven't read the books, I wouldn't suggest you, um watch them yet until you read the books and if you do watch it and don't mind spoilers and that's fine they're just my personal thoughts on what's happening in the book but this book has such such a, a, a special place in my heart because you guys know the situation if you are new to my channel and don't know i did start a testimony series which i need to actually get back on that but um in my testimony series i shared two testimonies my depressed my testimony on depression and my testimony on rape and molestation and this book here hit home for me um it meant a lot to me. And I did read this with my sis, Stephanie. Yes, Miss Stephanie from Quilting Beauty and Books. Right? I said that right here. It always sounds weird when I say it out loud, but I know it's Quilting Beauty and Books. Um, But we read the entire series together. Like, it's amazing. But this book right here for me was, like, top dog. This is still top dog for me, okay? Top dog. But we have A Royal Dance, five-star read, all the way. Following that, we then have the sequel, which is A Royal Family. And this book just... No words, because Linda gutted my heart out because she killed somebody that I loved, and I was not, I was not prepared. Like, me and Steph were not prepared. <laughs> Whew. If you're looking for an author that will surprise you each turn of the page, each chapter of the page, this is the series, okay? Read, read it. But this book here, five stars. I'm, I'm gonna keep going. So, and then we have the final book, which is A Royal Father, um, which this book here this was amazing if i'm not mistaken stephanie said she could relate more so to this book than the other books which i think is interesting um i think of all the books my favorite order would be book one book three and then book two i feel like book three is like the perfect conclusion but it left me on a cliffhanger a cliffhanger so i'm like excited for what's coming next because that cliffhanger killed me but um this ended the series pretty well for me like i loved it five star reads like i said i have all a reading blog for each of these books down below and i do want to shout out boy and cpr from instagram because they actually contacted me and actually sent me these books and i love them so much um linda ferguson for me is one of those authors that's not mainstream um and i feel like more people should know about her more people should read her books so i'm going to leave her website down below as well as links to her books because I highly recommend them. If you've seen my reading blog, then you already know. Like, yes. She up there with Tessa for me right now. Like, that's it. But this entire trilogy, like, the entire trilogy is just top dog. And for this to come second after Tessa, 
<sighs> like, come on. Get it. Like, j grab them okay just just do yourself a favor and grab them and read them um again it does deal with some hard hard hitting things there's a lot of death um but keep in mind this is biblical fiction it's written back in those times um so you know you get to see peter in this you get to see jesus in the first book i think the second book has um peter in it and the third book i, I think it's peter or is it paul you get to see some of the disciples period okay and you get to see Jesus. So I highly recommend this. And I think what I love about this is that you get to see Jesus in the light of him being um, friendly with a lot of children. You know, and we know that the Bible talks about children a lot and being childlike. And you get to see Jesus in that atmosphere around children, which is what I love. So this was phenomenal, 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 phenomenal. Five star reads across the board, which is insane. Okay, get it. Following that, we have another author that is new to me that was also sent to me from Boy and Scene PR. And again, I have to shout them out because they are phenomenal um, in getting me some books that I've never heard of from authors I've never heard of. And again, another five star read. And that's going to be In the Shadow of the King by Melissa Rosenberger. This book here, I, I first of all, I cannot wait for book two. Just saying that right now, book two, I can't wait. But this follows the story of Jesus told from his sister's perspective um and she is the second oldest jesus is the oldest she's the second oldest and you do also get to see his brothers as well and his mother and father and um i think this was so brilliantly written i have a mom's second have a reading block for this as well but this was brilliantly written um and it really makes you see the humanity in jesus it really makes you see um how his life could have been what his siblings would have felt like how it would have felt for him for a, a a girl to be like the 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 sister of Jesus and it's hard for me to articulate what I'm trying to say so just watch my reading vlogs I talk about it in my reading vlog but this was freaking phenomenal like phenomenal <laughs> the series is called um the unveiled series and this is a phenomenal because it it shows how even those closest to Jesus ran from him and um how when you run, you just do nothing but hurt yourself in the end. Um, and you just need to accept the love that he's giving you. And for me, I could relate to it because I found myself running for years from Jesus. Um, just because I was so far in the depression and stuff that I was dealing with that I just, I didn't want anything. I didn't want nobody. I didn't want help from anybody. Um, and I wanted to try to figure it out on my own. But when you try to do things on your own, it fails. And this book just, wow, it, it wowed me so yeah, five stars. Next book is going to be Land of Silence by Tessa Afshaw. Yes, Tessa Afshaw is on here plenty of times. There's another book on here from Tessa Afshaw. Just saying. Just saying. But um, this one follows the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And holy cow, this woman was such a strong person. In this story, they named her Eliana, which is, it means something. Oh my God, what does her name mean? My God has favored me. That's what her, I actually marked it like. Because I thought that was amazing. Like, I marked it. Um, her, her name means my God has favored me. And she has witnessed some crazy stuff. Now, Eliana was a very, very frustrating character at first with what she did. Like, just <sighs> frustrated me. But I fell in love with her as a character. I loved her growth. And to see her deal with um, her issue of blood for 12 years. Like, this actually takes you through the 12 years with her. And a lot of the times when we hear the story of the one with the issue of blood, we don't really take into account what she could have gone through. This book, again, brings a humanity into what this woman may have gone through, what she may have dealt with, and her going to these different positions and until she finally met Jesus and touched the hem of his garment. And it was powerful. Powerful, to say the least. I thoroughly enjoy this and highly recommend it. Then we have a biblical fiction classic, which I didn't really know about. A lot of people had told me about it, but I wasn't like, all right, I'm not going to read that type. Like, I wasn't interested in reading it until I just gave in, picked it up from, um, what you call it? Where did I get this from? Thrift Books. I got it from Thrift Books. And I am, I'm excited that I read it. Um, it was phenomenal. I don't know if I have a reading blog for this, and if I don't, I'm probably going to reread this and do a reading blog. Um, and it's The Robe by Lloyd T. Douglas. I know that there is a movie based on this, which I'm going to try to get my hands on to watch. But, first of all, let me just tell you guys now, this book is, 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 is a hefty book, okay? And there are 508, five, 508 pages, okay? 
So if you're not ready to read a big book, don't do it. Don't. In the booktube community, we call this a tome because it is over 500 pages. Like, that is excessive. But it is so good. Oh my god. So it follows a guy named Marcelo, right? Marcelo. Marcellus, excuse me. He is a Roman soldier. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so it follows a guy named Marcellus, who's a Roman soldier, and him just being the guy that won the robe. So we know in the Bible, I forgot the scripture, I'll throw it on the screen which scripture it is, but in the Bible they talk about how they cast lots for Jesus' garments. Um, and this talks about the guy or the soldier that had won the robe and how the robe had, um, it did something to him spiritually and opened his eyes to understanding Jesus and god and things like that and it follows his journey it also follows his slave um demetrius who is greek i think demetrius was greek i'm not 100 percent sure but he was a slave um and how he also had an encounter with jesus and it goes through the death and the resurrection of jesus and this roman soldier in greek who are gentiles basically they're not of the hebrew people they're not of god's children but it goes through their walk to faith and it is powerful powerful i loved it so much um it is funny it is heartbreaking it is there's death of course you get to actually witness and see the death of jesus the abuse that he went through and um i adored this book so much from beginning to end it was amazing it is long i did listen to the audiobook as i read this just because 500 pages like i didn't think i could get through it you guys but it was good and i see why it's a classic i adored this and i definitely want to watch the movie um i definitely would recommend if you can get your hands on this audiobook or not or physical book definitely do it um this was phenomenal and you guys can see i tabbed it up i tabbed it up five stars all the way thoroughly enjoyed this book a lot then we moving on to Connie Lynn Cassette, okay? So I read a lot of books from Connie Lynn Cassette this, this year, you know. I read her Out From Egypt's trilogy. Um, I read the third book, right? Yeah, the third book in her uh, Cities of Refuge, which was Until the Mountain Falls. I gave that one four stars. It really wasn't, like, up there for me. So I'm excited for the fifth book to come out. The fourth book, excuse me, to come out. But this book here... I'm a little biased because I love A Light on the Hill, so I'm already biased with the fact that I love it. And that's going to be Wings of the Wind by Connie Lynn Cassette. It's the final book in the Out from Egypt series and the book that you actually technically should read before reading A Light on the Hill because it features my girl. All right, my girl. Yeah, y'all know who my girl is, right? My, my girl is Mariah from A Light on the Hill, <laughs> so we know I love her. Her and Derek, life. But um, this one gives you sort of a prequel of mariah and how she was as a young girl it features a canaanite is she canaanite yeah a canaanite warrior whose name is alana and a hebrew warrior named tobiah and how they get married out of convenience um he marries her to help her out just to save her life and um it goes through their relationship how they go from enemies to, to lovers fake dating trope fake wedding marriage trope kind of thing and i enjoyed this a lot um i didn't think i would enjoy the whole fake marriage trope in biblical fiction but this was done so well and um i loved it and alana was such a strong character but again the only reason why i really thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this and really gave it a five stars is because you get to see the beginning stages of what happened to mariah because we all know what happens in A Light on the Hill, how she has the mar the mark of the Canaanite goddess or god or whatever it is on her face. And this book goes into depth of what exactly happened and how Alana saved her. And it's amazing because you get to see Mariah as such a bubbly little girl in this book. But then in A Light on the Hill, she's a lot more quiet and reserved. So again, I was biased from the start with this book. Just saying, just biased all the way because I loved a light on the hill but i loved alana and tobiah and their relationship and the secrets that were there and of course we get to see the other characters from the other two books kia and um oh my god uh what is her name oh my god i cannot remember this woman's name for the life of me but you also get to see miriam i think and this was miriam in this i think so either miriam or moses one of those it, it takes about it takes place around the time of exodus and you get to see miriam and moses um in the trilogy so i can't remember exactly who was in this but you get to see K kia and the other character oh my god shia shia i think that's how you say her name no i'm gonna i'm gonna figure out her name hold on shira her name was shira so yeah i don't know why i was saying shia but shira so um definitely enjoyed this loved it a lot and five stars Following that, we have another Tessa Apshar. Don't don't kill me. You you guys know I was on a roll to read all seven of her books before her eighth book came, comes out. Like I, that was my goal to finish all of her books before her eighth book come out. And um, 
Red of Angels. Um, we, yeah, it follows Lydia. Um, this features Paul. I liked Paul a lot better in this one than in Thief of Corinth. I did not care for Paul in Thief of Corinth. That was the only four-star book I gave to Tessa. But um, this one follows Lydia. And Lydia is the seller of the color purple. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, she was one of the first people in Philippi. Philippi? Is it Philippi? Yeah, Philippi to be um, baptized. So it was interesting to meet her. And see her life story and see how things worked. Um, definitely has some scriptures, of course, included in this. Again, I enjoyed Paul a lot more in this book. Um, but Lydia went through some... Oh, she went through some craziness. Oh, my God. She went through some stupidity with this guy. <sighs> I, I don't forgot his name at this point in time. But that guy pissed me off. Like, mm, him and his mama? No words. If you if you read this book, you know who I'm talking about. I, can, I literally cannot remember this man's name for the life of me. And his evil, twisted mother. But... I loved watching Lydia come to the faith um, and become a daughter of the true king and just the bonds that she built. Amazing. Five stars. Moving on, we have The Last Man at the End by R. William Bennett. I think I have a reading blog for this book, if I'm not mistaken. But this was actually a shocker to me. I got this from Shadow Mountain Press and um, Shadow Mountain Publications, I think it is. Is that the name of the company? It was from Shadow Mountain publications i always say shadow mountain press but i've worked with them a lot reading a lot of their middle grade novels and some of their like historical fictions but um i found that they had a biblical fiction and it was on the list so i requested it and this blew my mind and now that i have it i actually need to ask and see if i can get an actual hard like hardcover of this book because this book was phenomenal I, I loved it so much um this one deals with the guy oh what was his name um simon who is the Simon that actually helped Jesus carry the cross, which is written in these scriptures. I will put the scripture on the screen, exactly which one. But it sort of gives him a beginning and an end story. And um, it really goes through the idea of how some believers use their belief and their faith for convenience. Um, Simon was one of those who believed in God, believed in the law, but he used it for convenience alone. Um, he didn't fully live out his faith and it really kind of like smacked me in my face because there are some times where I use it for convenience and you don't really think about that using your faith and your beliefs as a convenience until you are made aware of it and it was like he would eat certain things like he knew he wasn't allowed to eat certain things but if he was on the road he didn't care if he was home he would abide by those um, he knew that the Sabbath was a day of rest but if he was on the road and he needed to make money he would work on the Sabbath instead of taking it off so um, I thought it was interesting I enjoyed him he was very stubborn <laughs> Ooh, stubborn to the core and it was definitely interesting seeing him um deal with his family dynamics because his wife was very devout like he even said it in the book several times how devout his wife was and when he had children his children even became devout and he didn't understand why his children um believed in jesus as a messiah so i enjoyed seeing his struggles um and him come to the faith and it was beautifully written love this book so much Okay, and the final book I have for you guys is going to be A Fire and Lions by Misu Andrews. And this is book two in the Prophet and Kings series. So it's, I don't know how many more books she's going to put in this, but this is book two. The first book is, of course, Isaiah's Daughter. This is book two. And this one follows the story or the entire book of Daniel, um, but told from his wife, Belly's Belly? I think that's how you said that. Belly? Belly. Belly. Um, from his wife's perspective. And I thoroughly enjoyed this a lot. Um... Misu Andrews, for me, a lot of her books, um, I've noticed her earlier books, I give four stars to, but her most recent books, I'm giving five stars to. I loved Isaiah's Daughter, which talks about the prophet Isaiah, King Hezekiah, and Hephziva. This one talks about Daniel, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed um, reading this and being able to compare it to the different things. Like, you even get to see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in this. You get to experience um, his family, his children. There's a lot of family issues going on in this book as well. So, thoroughly enjoyed it and highly recommend it. Okay, so that's it for, like, my top biblical fictions. But like I said, I got two honorable mentions. So, the first one. The first one is a book by Tessa Afshar that is coming out February 4th, 2020. And I read it. I got an e arc of it. <sighs> Daughter of Rome. Um, my life is... <laughs> okay, so I, I read this book. And I did get... I was... Maybe I was being a little extra critical because I love Tessa's writing. But I did give it a 4.75 star rating. Basically a 5, but I had to take, you know... 
a little bit off because I felt like the writing was very different. And I think what it was for me is that I had such high expectations for this book because I love Tessa. So I think that's what it is. So definitely when this book is released, I will get a physical copy and reread it over without the high expectations um i honestly believe that's what it was but i will say the writing style for this one was completely different this story follows priscilla and Aquila and paul and um it was interesting that's all i'm gonna say because i have a reading vlog coming as well as my book look makeup tutorial coming discussion where i talk about the book and do a makeup tutorial based off the cover and oh we let, let me just say I got the vibes from um, Pearl in the Sand as well as from Harvest of, is it Harvest of Rubies? I think it was. I compared it to those two books because there were certain aspects that I really adored. So yeah, this book as far as like her books that she wrote with Paul would definitely come after Bread of Angels. I still preferred Paul and Bread of Angels because in this book in um, Daughter of Rome, you don't really get to see much of Paul preaching the gospel. You get to see him more um, in... The, the human humane kind of way like working tents tent building and things like that but this was crazy like it was a crazy ride crazy ride that's all i'm gonna say just wait for my reading vlog is coming wait for it um and the last one which i i can't believe like my arc so I read the e-arc for both of these because I got approved for e-arcs. Um, one, because I'm a part of the launch team for both these books. And two, just because I have NetGalley. So, um, <clears throat> let me just say, hmm, this one got a five stars for me. Five stars. And I, I got my arc, my like my physical arc about two days ago. Um, I've been sitting on this for two days. I probably should take a picture of this and post it up so people know that I got it. But um, <laughs> this book gave me life. It gave me so much life, like, so much life. And you guys know how much I adore Isaiah. I think Isaiah's Daughter was one of the first biblical fiction stories I've read, um, if I'm not mistaken. It was one of the first, and I gave that five stars. And it's the first book in the Prophets and Kings. Um, let me just actually grab that book for you guys right now, because it's here. And my bookshelf is destroyed. But Prophet, the Isaiah's Daughter looks like this. Loved it so much. This is the story of king hezekiah when he was younger up until he's a grown man as well as um the prophet isaiah and what would have happened if isaiah just happened to have adopted a young girl and named her hef -Ziva. and we know that hef -Ziva is mentioned in the bible i will put the scriptures on the screen so you guys know um she is also the do the, the mother of hezekiah's son manasseh so yes i love this book so much and um this book comes out february 18th tuesday and Isaiah's Legacy. So, this is actually book three in the Prophets and Kings trilogy, but it is a sequel to Isaiah's Daughter. So, I'm going to show you guys right now how this works, okay? So, here's the books together, okay? Keep in mind, these two books are arcs. I am going to purchase the actual physical copies myself, but these two books are arcs. Um, but you have Isaiah's Daughter, which is book one in the Prophets and Kings. Then book two is going to be A Fire and Lions. And then you have book three, which is Isaiah's Legacy. But this is the sequel, like I said, to Isaiah's Daughter. First of all, these covers together are stunning to me. They're beautiful. The way they just have that, that the girl and her white. I love the font. I'm just, I'm here for it. Um, I love everything about it. I... Beautiful. Stunning. Um, five stars. This talks about King Manasseh, and um, you get to see Hephzibah as a grieving mother. You get to see King Hezekiah and his death. Oh my god, his death killed me. Oh. There are no words to express how I feel about his death because it... it now again, I read the E-Arc, um, so I didn't read the physical arc, but I will definitely be rereading this and will be buying the actual copy of this book to go on my bookshelf. But oh my word just my reading vlog is coming on the release day and um i'm thinking about doing a book to look makeup tutorial on this as well because i have so many feelings this, this book is dark okay this is dark just know going into this book this is dark if you're not here for deaths if you're not here for murders if you're not here for dark magic just don't read this if you're not here for rape don't read this if you're not here for a young girl um 
just deceiving a young younger child just don't read this okay it is dark it is gritty and i loved it and the reason why i loved it is because a lot of the times when we read biblical fiction novels we think of happy-go-lucky people we don't really take into the to account the real grittiness in the times that they lived in but misu held no bars like she ain't hold back and she even has an author note about the story and things like that um she goes into depth like this is dark and boy was i smacked in the face plenty of times but i loved how even in the darkness of what was happening you still was able to see the light you still was able to see god working you were still able to see the faith of many of these people working and i mean there was death after death after death like holy cow you got to see the downfall of hezekiah you got to see the downfall of king manasseh and how they both they both had their downfalls but then came up and did things that glorified god in the end but it was no words so i had to put those two because those are honorable mentions i will be mentioning them in 2020 2020's video because i'm going to be reading the actual finished copies when they come out just just no those two right there they going on my list for 2020 but that is it for this video you guys if you guys have read any of these books let me know your thoughts down below let's have a discussion about these books i'm all here for talking about books you guys know but um i think that is it for this video so i'm going to end it here if you are not subscribed subscribe to the channel join the family join the sisterhood if you are subscribed hit the bell to stay notified and i'll see you guys in the next video bye